Professional athletes seem to have it all, fame, adulation, and riches. But once an athlete retires, it's a different story. It seems hard to believe, but here's a look at some top-tier athletes who lost all their cash. He was an NBA All-Star and an Olympian, but Vin Baker was also an alcoholic. Despite earning nearly $100 million over the course of his career, Baker lost it all. Drinking his way out of the league, Baker's house was foreclosed on and he eventually sold his gold medal to pay the bills. After hitting rock bottom though, Baker was able to get sober. He reached out to an old boss, former Supersonics owner Howard Schultz, who offered him a job. Baker told WBUR, We met and we came up with a plan and we exercised that plan and part of the plan was to uh, make caramel macchiatos and serve coffee at Starbucks. It doesn't sound like much, but Baker told the Providence Journal it was the chance he needed. I get energy from waking up in the morning and not depending on alcohol and not being embarrassed or ashamed to know I have a family to take care of. The show's gotta go on. Since then, Baker has moved on and up, working with the Milwaukee Bucks as a commentator. Way to go, Finn. In the mid-80s, no NFL star was bigger than William the Refrigerator Perry, either literally or figuratively. A defensive lineman who moonlighted as the heaviest player to ever score a touchdown, the fridge was, as one Chicago Sun-Times columnist put it at the time, the best use of fat since the invention of bacon. By 2015, though, Perry had lost both his health and his fortune. According to a Sports Illustrated profile, Perry lives in a retirement home plagued by severe diabetes and cognitive issues. He also had to sell his Super Bowl ring and subsist below the poverty line on Social Security checks. His old Bears coach, Mike Ditka, told SI, It's tragic. I think he's given up. And the question in my mind is, why? There's no easy exit strategy from the fight game, something Evander Holyfield found out the hard way. Despite earning what the BBC estimates to be $230 million over his career, including a $33 million purse for fighting a famously violent Mike Tyson. I'm sorry, Evander. It's your ear. Holyfield has spent a decade battling financial collapse. With a lavish lifestyle that saw him a regular in the casinos of Vegas and Atlantic City, and having 11 children by five different women, Holyfield found that even a fortune can disappear when everyone's coming for it. From the heights of Olympic glory and heavyweight championships, ESPN reported that Holyfield found himself unable to pay $3,000 alimony checks. His house was foreclosed on and all his sports memorabilia was put up for auction. This massive debt forced the pugilist to hold on long past his expiration date, fighting and losing matches into his 50s. In 2012, Holyfield told The Independent, These are difficult days. Dealing with all the mothers of all my kids. There ain't no winning here, man. No winning at all. I've had no money to pay lawyers and had to fight on my own in court, and that ain't easy. He finally retired in 2014 at the age of 51. Cleveland Browns legend Bernie Kosar was an all-pro superstar who earned millions over the course of his career. And yet, according to court documents, when he filed for bankruptcy in 2009, he had amassed millions in debt, and his checking account had all of $44 in it. You once told me that you've had $300 million and you've had zero. Yep. How is that possible? Kosar told the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette that financial advisors mismanaged his money and too many people came looking for handouts. He estimates he gave out over eight figures to ex-teammates, plus another eight figures to friends and family without ever seeing a dime repaid. And according to the ESPN documentary Broke, Kosar's own father siphoned off a fortune for mortgages and car payments. As a result, Kosar at one point owed millions to both his ex-wife and his ex-team. I'm really good at making it, good at spending it, great at giving it away. <laughs> over the course of his all-star NBA career, Antoine Walker earned over $110 million. But just two years after he retired in 2008, Walker declared bankruptcy. Besides a number of bad business investments, Walker blew his fortune on clothes and cars. According to the Las Vegas Sun, it got so bad that Walker was convicted of passing bad checks to casinos in 2010. A plea agreement kept him out of jail and served as a wake-up call. Nowadays, Walker works as a consultant for Morgan Stanley, advising young athletes on what not to do with their money, a topic he's an expert in. He told CNN Money, I thought I was set for the rest of my life. My story is sad. It's sad to see other guys work so hard throughout their life, and then they just lose it. I want to share those things, but also tell my story so people can see it as a learned example. From being arrested carrying loaded weapons to an incident in which he was filmed wandering outside a jack-in-the-box in a hospital gown, when former NBA star Delonte West pops up in the news, the stories are often concerning. During the 2011 NBA lockout, he applied for a job at Home Depot and told ESPN that he was hoping to get another job selling knives. 
And while he earned $16 million over his eight-year career in the league, by 2012 he was using space heaters to keep his Maryland mansion warm because he couldn't afford to heat it. In 2017, West, who has been diagnosed as bipolar, was photographed panhandling, sparking fears that he was homeless. While he denied the rumors, it's no wonder fans are worried for West once again. For 80s baseball icon Lenny Dykstra, retirement actually seemed like a good thing at first, as he turned a car wash franchise into an empire complete with a mansion and private jet. In 2009, though, he was forced to declare bankruptcy after a magazine startup went off the rails. And that was just the start of his legal trouble. In 2011, he was arrested for grand theft auto, possession of narcotics, federal bankruptcy fraud, and indecent exposure. By the end of the year, he was in jail. After being released in 2013, Dykstra told the New York Times, I became addicted to money. Money was my drug. Debbie Thomas, a bronze medalist at the 1988 Olympics, was an African-American trailblazer and one of the most popular figure skaters in America. After retiring from skating, Thomas graduated from medical school and began practicing orthopedic surgery. Her attitude caused problems. She bounced from job to job. She tried starting her own practice, but it failed. According to the TV series Fix My Life, on which she appeared in 2015, she lived in a bed-bug-infested trailer with her fiancé. Her medical license lapsed, and her only income came from selling gold bullion. In 2012, she approached a police officer, saying she had a gun and that she planned on hurting herself. This led to a bipolar diagnosis, which she denies. Thomas told The Washington Post, I'm very misunderstood because I look at the world differently. You can call it the Olympian mentality. Behind the facade of a hoops prodigy, Kenny Anderson hid a more complicated life. As he told SB Nation in 2013, he was molested by two different men and spent his childhood in the shadow of his mother's addictions. His NBA earnings totaled more than $63 million, but his demons remained. His lifestyle, which included numerous mansions, 11 cars, and eight children by three different mothers, took a toll on his wallet. He filed for bankruptcy in 2005, the year he left the NBA. As he explained to Forbes, I wasn't a gambler or a drug addict, but I did foolish things. In the 2017 documentary Mr. Chibs, Anderson showed what it meant to lose so much. Anderson says he lives comfortably now, and his main focus is being a better parent to his many children. I had everything. Uh -huh. Millions. Mm. And I was like, That's miserable. Vince Young's college football coach told Sports Illustrated his former star quarterback was obviously one of the best to ever play college football. Many fans consider Young's 2006 Rose Bowl performance one of the best. It bought him a ticket to the NFL, but despite winning Offensive Rookie of the Year and earning two Pro Bowl appearances, Young struggled. After clashes with his coaches, he played his last NFL game in 2011. A suicide scare and a DUI turned him into tabloid fodder, and a lifetime of ignoring his finances led to bankruptcy that same year. He was far too generous, notoriously spending $15,000 for one meal at a cheesecake factory. In recent years, Young has righted his financial ship and took a job at his alma mater, the University of Texas. He played for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the CFL in 2017 before an injury forced him to retire, most likely for good this time. Arancha Sanchez Vicario won 14 tennis grand slams and became only the second woman ever to be ranked number one simultaneously in both singles and doubles. Despite earning $17 million in prize money over her 17-year career and another $40 million in endorsements, the icon told Spanish magazine La Otra Conica, My parents left me with nothing, and now I'm indebted to the tax authorities and I will not be quiet. Sanchez Vicario sued her father and her brother for restitution. According to her lawsuit, her family was living extravagantly, thanks to offshore accounts and duplicitous dealings, while she got by on 1,500 euros per month. Crowned World Council Heavyweight Champion in 1986, Mike Tyson went on to win the World Boxing Association and International Boxing Federation Championships. He ruled the ring into 1989, but things started to fall apart. His wife, Robin Givens, divorced him, alleging physical abuse. In early 1990, he lost the championship to an underdog. In 1991, he was accused of rape, and in 1992, he was sentenced to six years for the crime. When he got out of jail after only three years, Tyson returned to boxing. During a match with Evander Holyfield, Tyson was disqualified for biting off part of Holyfield's ear. The boxing commission withheld $3 million from his purse. He lost another big fight in 2002 and filed for bankruptcy 
Chelsea in 2003. He wasn't earning enough to support his $400,000 a month lifestyle, and his debts totaled more than $20 million. He was probably regretting the $173,000 diamond chains. I never really learned the art of handling money as a kid, you know, that's an art. Hall of Famer Dennis Rodman spent millions of dollars not on diamond chains but on NBA fines. In 1997, he was fined $25,000 for kicking a cameraman. An 11-game suspension for the incident cost him around $1 million. Later that year, he was fined $50,000 for expletive-laced comments he made about Mormons while he was in Utah. In 2000, he raked up $13,500 in fines in five games. Fines weren't the only things sucking the cash out of Rodman's personal fortune. Rodman's lifestyle cost him around $31,000 a month, and he wasn't taking home enough money to pay for it. In 2012, CBS reported he owed $860,000 in child support payments and owed about $350,000 in California state taxes. According to CNBC, before his infamous murder trial, O.J. Simpson was worth an estimated $11 million. The trial cost him around $50,000 a day, yet he continued to generate income while he was in custody, mostly through the sale of memorabilia, which actually increased in demand. O.J. Simpson autographs were even more valuable if they were dated from the time of the trial. Even so, during the civil trial that followed his acquittal, his attorneys claimed he was $850,000 in debt. As of 2014, the Goldman and Brown families say they've been able to collect less than 1% of the $33.5 million they were awarded in that case. Simpson has a pension from the NFL worth $25,000 a month, and by law, the Goldmans and Browns can't take any of it. So he may have lost millions, but he isn't exactly destitute. Dorothy Hamill was just 19 when she won figure skating gold at the 1976 Winter Olympics. It was tough for a teenager to suddenly be smart about managing millions of dollars from endorsements. Hamill filed for bankruptcy in 1996, claiming $1.3 million in assets and $1.6 million in debt, with no contracts to perform, to endorse products, to commentate, or to perform other professional services. She could no longer self-market her way out of her financial woes. It just wasn't everything I thought winning an Olympic gold medal would be. Hamill blamed her estranged husband for talking her into bad business ventures, although her friends told the press that she had pretty terrible spending habits. As of 2018, Hamill says she's changed her ways. She said, The good news is I finally found people that are trustworthy and I'm a little smarter. Golfer John Daly made a name for himself on the PGA Tour in 1991 when he won the PGA Championship playing as an alternate. His performance earned him the coveted title of Rookie of the Year. Daly squandered the money he earned as a professional golfer in one of the most devastating ways possible. He gambled it all away in casinos over about 15 years. In a 2014 interview with TMZ Sports, Daly says he calculated his total gambling losses at around $90 million. Daly told TMZ that he would often and take out million-dollar markers and play blackjack. Sometimes he'd have as much as $600,000 on a single table. When asked if he regretted his gambling days, he just said, Man, I had a great time. In 1985, at the age of 17, Boris Becker became the youngest men's singles champion at Wimbledon. By 1996, he had three Wimbledon wins, plus a U.S. Open win and two Australian Open wins. The New York Post says he was worth about $63 million in prize money and sponsorships. Becker lost a large portion of his fortune after a brief romantic encounter with a Russian model named Angela Armakova. She got pregnant, which was particularly awkward since the hookup happened while his wife was also pregnant. The subsequent divorce and child support for his various children has estimated to cost him over $26 million. The German government later came after him for millions in back taxes. Finally, in 2017, after decades of financial woe, Becker was declared bankrupt. Deuce McAllister got into the University of Mississippi on his own merits and made a name for himself in football. He went on to a career in the NFL, where he played for nine seasons and was voted into the Pro Bowl in 2003. He became legendary while playing for the New Orleans Saints, setting their all-time rushing touchdown record in 2008. According to Pro Football Talk, McAllister made tens of millions during his career, but then he made an unfortunate decision to buy a Jackson, Mississippi Nissan dealership, which went bankrupt in 2009 after Nissan says he defaulted on his payments and went over his credit line. By 2011, Whitney National Bank was after McAllister for an unpaid $1.8 million mortgage. 
Former NFL quarterback Mark Brunel was once worth about $50 million, but he squandered it all on nine shaky business enterprises. According to SB Nation, five of those nine businesses went under, and as of 2011, Brunel was the subject of six lawsuits. The worst of all his investments was real estate firm Champion LLC, which lost him a ton of money when the market crashed. SB Nation said he was so broke that he planned to get a job as a medical sales representative upon his retirement, but in 2018, he landed a job as a local TV sports anchor. He also works as a high school football coach for the Episcopal Eagles, which is a gig he says he loves. He told 1010XL, Honestly, when I took the job, I thought I may do it for two or three years. And now I'm going into year six, and I have no plans of leaving anytime soon. All-Pro Lawrence Taylor was a Hall of Fame nominee who played linebacker in the NFL for 13 seasons and earned about $50 million over the course of his career. A lot of that money went toward a drug and alcohol problem. I went on the bench for like a, over a year, every day for over a year. At its worst, Taylor says his drug habit cost him thousands of dollars a day. In 1988, he was suspended for failing the NFL's drug test, and he was later arrested for buying crack cocaine from an undercover officer. Taylor also once owned a $10 million business that went bust, and in 1990, he filed a false tax return that came back to bite him. In 1998, he filed for bankruptcy protection to avoid foreclosure on his $600,000 home in New Jersey. In 2010, he was arrested on charges of having sex with a minor. He pleaded guilty and got probation. Former quarterback Michael Vick became infamous back in 2007 when he pleaded guilty to charges related to an illegal dogfighting ring. Vick co-owned Bad News Kennels, which was training around 50 pit bull terriers to participate in high-stakes dogfights. They executed the dogs that didn't perform well. Vick spent 18 months in prison and accumulated $17.8 million in debt. In 2008, he filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Since then, he's tried to redeem himself. In 2014, he told ESPN he filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy instead of Chapter 7 so he would have an opportunity to pay back his debts. He said, I didn't want to stiff people who never stiffed me. 